Hey, Lucas. You want to paint? Yeah, sure. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the one platform to take your creativity into your full-time job. This week we're going old school Squidmar, painting up a start collecting box with Nurgle demons, showing you how you can make each miniature look different but still coherent as an army, what paints to use, which techniques we find are the best to get something to look good in a short amount of time. So obviously this is an amazing box and we want to do some more painting videos this summer, uh, but vacation is closing in really soon so I need some help. Me. <laughs> You're up for the time to make the best Nurgle start collecting tutorial ever. Yeah. Okay, you have two hours. Let's go. Okay, so two hours wasn't really 100% true. With basing and building and painting, it was more like a 24 hour process. And these Nurgly boys are going to look really good in the end and be really unique. Games Workshop have this thing where they paint entire boxes where every miniature looks exactly the same, just creating a green wall. Why do this when you can use a few colors, probably even fewer than they have, yet make all the miniatures look unique? Where one can be green, where the other one is pale, and the third one is brown. In true Squidmore fashion, it's now time for some magic. Okay, so for these bad boys, Lucas is using five different base tones and placing them on different places on each miniature. As his main tone, he's using Calibon Green, a dark yet saturated green. For the sickly skin tones, he's using Bugman's Glow and use the colors differently on each miniature. Maybe don't use this belly color on all of the minis, maybe use it on the shoulders on the next one or in the face of the third one. That's what's gonna make your army unique. Cause you don't want an army that just looks like a green wall. And the base tone of the wings is gonna be a 50-50 mix of Bugman's Glow and Dark Sea Blue. For some of the brown rotten areas he's using Mornfang brown and on the shadows he's also mixing in some Rhinox hide. He's doing the same thing with the flies and the armor parts on the front of them. On one of them he's painting with the brown colors and on the other one he's painting it green. Using either Rhinox hide or Caliban green. Okay it's time to jump in on adding the highlight colors. If you're a bit worried on how to place highlights on miniatures, we got a bunch of good videos on that. I would recommend you to start on this video about volumes, but secondly, I would recommend you to check out the masterclass video because that one is packed with information on how to learn to place highlights. So let's start with the wings. Using clean Bugman's Glow, starting at the top of each of these different folds. And Lucas is painting this with a layer consistency and goes down to about 80% of the different folds. On the parts that he started with a clean Bugman's Glow, he's going in with a clean rock art flesh. This will make the skin really look as though it's lacking blood flow and is pale and rotten. And doing these different steps in an assembly line fashion will save you so much time. And don't worry if the layers aren't perfectly blend together, they're gonna look amazing anyway once they're on the table. As a final punch to the highlights, add a little bit of ivory to that Rakarth flesh and your pale skin tones are gonna be done. And while he's doing that, I wanted to take a few seconds to thank this week's sponsor, Squarespace. I know that a lot of my viewers are incredibly creative and maybe you have this one hobby or project that you want as a means to make a living. And Squarespace is exactly that, an all-in-one platform where you can take your hobby or idea into a way of making a living. Maybe you're a sculptor or a teacher, through Squarespace you can make a subscription service or make a paywall for your content. Or maybe you're just an artist and want to showcase your art in a nice gallery and sell your art. So if you want to build your own website and make your presence available on the internet, you can try it out for free down below. And when you're ready to launch the website, you can use the code Squidmark and get 10% off. Now, let's continue with the video. So for all of the brown parts that have been base coated with a Mornfang brown, it's time to go in with some Scrofulous Brown as our first highlight. 
using the same volumetric approach, adding the highlights to the surfaces that are angled towards the sky. If you want to take it another step, again, just add a little bit of Vallejo ivory and you're gonna have something that looks almost goldy but rotten at the same time. This looked amazing on all of the different guts spilling out from their bellies. For those parts that you started with the Rhinox hide, however, you can go a few different directions. Either you can just gradually add more ivory to the Rhinox hide, or you can take the same steps adding Mornfang brown, scrofulous brown, and then adding a little bit of ivory to that scrofulous brown. An idea to separate the different body parts might be to make the horns with Rhinox hide and ivory, and on all of the other parts maybe add Mornfang brown and scrofulous brown into the mix. The recipe for the green skin tone is really simple. You use the Caliban green that you had as a base tone and then just gradually add more and more Vallejo yellow green. You do that until you reach a clean yellow green. With that, it looks really good. But as always, if you want to, you can add a little bit of ivory that will make the contrast even a bit higher, but you also lose some of that saturation. Just keep in mind where you do the placement of the highlights. That is way more important than blending the different layers together. Okay, all of the basic tones are added. It's time to paint all of the details on the miniatures. To give the flies a little bit of extra scariness, Lucas is painting some veins on the different wings. These veins don't need to be super detailed, just use an ivory, thin down the paint and create different veins. Make them look almost like lightning bolts. Once they're dried, glaze in some fluorescent green. And with that, the wings are looking so badass. One of our new favorite color series is the Green Stuff World Pure Metal Pigments. And the copper is no exception, it looks fantastic. We're adding that to all of the different metal parts. It almost looks too good to be Nurgle though. So for the shadow colors we're mixing in one drop of black and brown ink before we start painting it. To make the weapons and metals really nergly, we need to add some verdigris. Lucas is using Vallejo blue-green and on some areas mixing in a little bit of ivory to the blue-green. Get hyped for the final painted detail. The eyes and the surrounding area is base coated with the screamer pink. We then add a pure ivory to the eyeball and then glaze in some fluorescent magenta to finish it off. We all know it's all about the base. Before Lucas even primed the miniature, he added some texture paste to the bases. But make sure to leave some of the parts closest to the feet free from any texture paint. This is going to be to create a feeling that the miniatures are emerging from this gooey slime that's in the center of the bases. He covered the whole base with Rhinox hide, and before it's even dry, he adds some P3 Battle Dress green. This is to get some variation in the base tone. He's topping that off by dry brushing in some sandry dust. Having this green and brown base tone mixed together with the dry brushed beige highlight really does make it feel like a swamp. But we got two more steps to make it look like a really toxic swamp. Similarly to what we did with the lightning bolts on the wings, we're adding some ivory to the legs and then glazing in a little bit of fluorescent green. If you feel brave, you can also do some of these patterns on the ground that we left without that texture paint. And to make the toxic pool effects, he's mixing in some fluorescent green with Green Stuff World UV resin and then just hardening it using a UV torch. And a base wouldn't be complete with a bunch of cool grass tufts. Lucas had the dead marshes from Lord of the Rings in the back of his head while doing this, so he used some greens and beige tones. And boom, I think it's time 
for a grand reveal. And as you can see, when they come together, they all look coherent, even though every single one of them is unique. One of my favorite parts of the whole army is that the flies have different armor colors, yet fit together so well. And you can go even more nuts with this, maybe bring in some oranges or reds. As long as you have the same base tones, you can branch out and try different things. So I think that was the most epic star collecting you've done, Lucas. Yeah, up there. Yeah, I was super happy with the result. And I hope you learned something, because that was some cool bleep. So if you wonder about the colors used in this video, we got it all listed down in the video description. You can also buy any of the stuff that we used from Amazon or whatever affiliate link we have down below and support the channel. You can also become a patron. That's awesome, because that helps pay my salary and his. Peace. Please, because he wants to be paid. Also, don't forget to check out this week's sponsor, Squarespace. You can try it out for free down below. And when you're ready to launch the website, you can use the code Squidmark and get 10% off. I think with that, I think uh, it's goodbye. Because we're on vacation and this is pre-recorded. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>